No, I don't waste no time. How are you doing guys and welcome to a new video. For those of you that are watching this on YouTube, this is a recording for my Facebook group called the Digital Marketing Consultants Community, previously known as the Lifestyle Design Community. So before we actually dive into the video, um, we've had multiple Facebook groups in the past, the Agency Scale and Fast Track Community, like I said, the Lifestyle Design Community, um, among you know, a few others. We've actually decided to merge everything together into one big, massive community. Um, and that is now the digital marketing consultants community. So if you have not checked it out yet, or if you're not part of the group just yet, make sure you do. It's a free community, uh, free Facebook group, and it's also uh, got our vault, which basically contains all of the content, all of our courses, all of the modules, everything that you want for free, everything is in there. So uh, feel free to check out that. Uh, but anyway, on to the video. So um, if you guys have actually seen um, you know, my YouTube channel, etc. There's a video on there where I basically go over how you can calculate the ROI for your clients and what the return ad spend needs to be in order to actually make your clients a profit. Because if we spend $1 on Facebook and we get $2 out, yes, we will have a positive ROAS on Facebook, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the client is actually earning money based off of you know your service and you run the Facebook ads. So if that client has a very low profit margin or you have a very high retainer, um, chances are they might not actually be profiting from your service, despite the fact that in the ads manager, the return on ad spend and the return is actually you know positive. So it's above one or even above two. Okay, so uh, like I said, in my YouTube video, previous YouTube video, I sort of created like this calculator for you guys, but this is actually one that I use myself. So I thought I'd just go over this and explain to you guys, you know, why I've used these numbers and how you can recreate this for your uh, for yourself. Actually, I might even give this away. Comment down below if you're in the Facebook group, just comment calculator and uh, I'll probably just end up giving this away to you guys as well. But anyway, so these are the numbers uh, and the metrics that affect what needs to happen in order for a client to get a retain. So of course, when you sign a client, it's not only the retainer, it's also the ad spend. So those are two basically, um, you know, two factors into the investment. So it's not only the client invest a thousand pounds or a thousand euros a month into your service, they also, you know, foot the bill for the ad spend. So also, you know, just quick side note for you guys that ask that question, because it is quite a common question that I get. You do not, as an agency, as a media buyer, as a freelancer, you do not pay for the ads, okay? So you do not charge the client for the ads, you do not pay for the ads, nothing like that. You get paid a retainer, so a set fee, unless of course you're on like some kind of performance setup, etc. But, you know, usually you will get paid a set fee prior to you working together. So you get paid this upfront for, you know, the next 30 days. Um, and that is your fee, you know, that is yours to keep yours to take home. And then the ad spend that is done by a credit card that is attached by the client into their ad account. Okay, so it's got nothing to do with you. You do not do anything in terms of the spend. You do not pay for that. You do not invoice for that. Nothing like that. You invoice your retainer, your fee, and the rest gets done by the client. So the client attaches their credit card to their ad account. You get access to their ad account and you spend money basically off their credit card or off their debit card. Okay, so that is how that works. So. Like I said, uh, let's say our retainer, um, these are just mock-up numbers. Um, actually, I think it's a previous client of mine, but so let's say the retainer is not six and a half K. Um, you're just starting out, so your retainer is actually a thousand, okay? And the client agrees that, okay, with a thousand dollar retainer, they are willing to invest an extra 1500 into ads. Now, again, let's say you're just starting out and your return on ad spend, so the amount of money that you generate um, you know, through the ads, through the amount that you've spent in the ads manager is two. So that means that we've spent 1500 in ads. We've gotten a return of two, which means that we've doubled our money, which means that our purchase conversion value is 3000. So if you look at the calculation here as well, it's C5 times C8. So it's ad spend times return on ad spend. So those two together make up the purchase conversion value. Okay, so in the ads manager, this client will see, okay, I've just made 3,000, I've spent 1,500, 
I'd have made 3,000. So yes, in the ads manager, it says a ROAS of two, but that does not mean that it's actually profitable for the client. As we can see here, the return on investments is actually minus 1,000. So how does that work? Well, when a client sells a product, unless it's a digital product, which means that it's like a PDF or an online course, something that you create once so you can sell forever, unless that is the case, there is a cost associated with actually you know, selling that product out. So if it's, for example, a pair of jeans or a pair of sneakers or it's, you know, it's a dress or anything like that, then of course, that dress needs to be made, that dress needs to be shipped, etc. Okay, so there's costs associated with actually getting that product sold. And that is why there is a profit margin percentage, you know, uh, in terms of when the product gets sold. So let's say we have a product, we have a dress that is $50 and 25% of the $50 is what it costs to get, like I said, get it created, get it shipped and get it you know, sent over to the customer. So that means that out of the $50 of revenue that is generated by selling the dress, $25 goes into getting that dress created and shipped. So the profit margin percentage is 50%, which means that a row asset two is actually just breaking even because we need to double our money to actually you know, make that, uh, well, in this case, break, break even, and then anything above that is when it becomes profitable. So that means that if we sell $3,000 worth of dresses in this case, with a 50% profit margin, the cost of goods sold is 1,500, because that is 15%, uh, 50%, sorry, of 3,000. So as you can see here, it's actually 100% uh, minus C14, which is the profit margin percentage, times C11, which is the page conversion value, because it's the reverse of the profit margin, right? So let's say the profit margin is not 50%, but it's 20%, then we can see here, um, that the cost of goods sold is actually higher because that means that the costs are 80%, if that makes sense. Any questions about that, just leave a comment down below. Happy to clarify that in a future video or just in a comment. Okay, so um, I'll bump this up to 80% just to show you guys that the cost of goods are now only 20% because it's 100 minus this percentage. So 100 minus 80 is 20%. Um, and that is why the cost of goods sold in this equation is only $600. Okay. So if you look at this, there's the retainer, that is what the client's paid you. There's the ad spend, and then when a sale gets made, there's obviously the cost of goods sold as well. So that means that in this case, the client has invested into the agency 1,500 in ads and 1,000 in retainer, which is 2,500. Now, that is not the total investment because like I said, once something gets sold, there are also costs associated with that. So the total client's investment in this case is the ad spend, the cost of goods sold, and the retainer. So the cost of, uh, so the ad spend and the retainer is 2,500. In this case, because we've got an 80% profit margin, that means the cost of goods sold are 600, so that gives us a grand total of 3,100. Now, as I mentioned before, the purchase conversion value is only 3,000 because we've got our ROAS at two and an ad spend of 1,500. So that means that we've made back 3,000, but the client has invested 3,100. That means that we've actually made a loss of, well, the client has made a loss of $100, which means that our ROI score is above, uh, below 100%. Okay, so these are the numbers that we need to play around with. Like, how can we now turn this around for the client? Well, we can try, like, you can play around with these numbers to give your client advice on what to do to make this profitable. Because if you leave this, the client, of course, will leave. So we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. So what can we do? Well, let's say we bump up the ad spend from 1,500 to 5,000. What happens? Well, as you can see here, because we've got a ROAS of two, our return on investment is now actually profitable. Now, how does that work? The reason why it's now profitable, because you think, okay, well, we're making a loss uh, on a small scale. Why should we spend more? You know, that is going to mean that we're going to be even more at a loss. True, but our retainer does not go up. So our retainer percentage-wise is now a smaller percentage of the total investment, okay? So that is only an eighth of the investment here, as you can see. So it's... Um, you know, we spent, or the client has invested 8,000 and the retainer is only 1,000 out of the eight. Whereas, you know, previously it was almost like a third. 
okay so this is a set fee you know that retainer doesn't make any difference to how much we spend and what the retainer ad spend is etc um so in this case by spending more we could actually turn that around for the client and sometimes that is the case right like if you know that your client has got a high profit margin and the ROAS is positive sometimes spending more can actually do uh, more good than it can do harm whereas let's say um, we you know stick to or actually let's say we go a thousand then as you can see we've made you know an even bigger loss so by spending an extra 500 so going up to 1500 we've actually you know diminished that loss that we've generated for the client and that's why i always say to you guys as well is make sure that your retainer is never more than the ad spend so let's say um we've agreed that we're going to spend a thousand in ads but your retainer is two thousand look at that like the client made a big big loss and even though your ROAS, let's say your ROAS was three um and your profit margin percent is 80 because you're only spending a thousand but you've, 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 you've basically taken home, you know, 2,000 of that 1,000, you need to get them a return on investment with a much smaller budget than you're actually taking home, if that makes sense. So what I always recommend doing is having more ad spend than the actual retainer. So if your client is not in a position to, um, you know, like I said, pay your full retainer uh, because it means that they can't spend enough on ads, it might actually be worth you lowering your retainer so they've got more ad spend or, you know, basically say, listen, keep all the money, allocate it all to ads and we'll actually work out a back end deal. That is also an option. And that way, you know, you can actually make more money in the back end. Because let's say we don't have a retainer and we tell the client, okay, let's just chuck everything into ads. Everything you've got, chuck into ads. So client's now made 4,200. It's happy, you know, it's willing to stay, etc. And let's say you say then, okay, well, we'll actually take 20% um, or something like that of uh, the return on investments then you know maybe on the first month you won't actually make it more profitable than your actual retainer but let's say your clients you know making four four thousand two hundred off of so that's profits so it's actually nine thousand in revenue off of three thousand but it's, it's profiting 4.2k every single month your clients gonna be happy to spend more on ads so maybe in month one we get these numbers in month two, the client says, I'll tell you what, let's just allocate the extra 4,200 we just made to the ads. So we've got 7,200 in ad spend, which means that they make 21K, which means that in month two, they've actually made you know an, an additional 10K in profit. And then let's say you did then have a 20% uh, back-end deal based off of the return on investment, then you've just made yourself 2K. Okay, so those are like things that we can play around with to make it profitable for the client as well as us. Because at the end of the day, I know all these gurus are telling you, you know, that you can't move away from the retainer. You need to ask X amount and stuff like that. But it's actually much more profitable to work with the client to make sure it's a win-win situation because rather than the client leaving you after one month, the client will actually be willing to stay, which means that your agency is much more stable and it's much easier to scale as well. Okay, so let's just put our retainer back here to 1500 now, um, let's say 1500 we spend an additional 1500 on the ads. No, let, let's get to a point where it's not actually profitable. So um, the ROAS is two and the profit margin is 50%. Okay, so with these numbers, we've spent 1500 on ads. We've got a retainer 1500, which means that it's 3000 invested. We've got a 50% profit margin, which means that an additional $1,500 uh, is invested by the client because of the cost of goods sold which means that with these numbers, it's not actually profitable for the client, which means that they're actually losing 1500 every single month. So how can we turn this around? Well, the first thing we can do here is bump up the return on ad spend. So from an ads perspective, you need to do more to make it you know, worthwhile. So your return on ad spend needs to be higher. You need to be using better images. You need to be figuring out where in the flow is it actually going wrong. You know, where are you losing the traffic? Is it because is it that the ads are not performing? Is it that the landing page is not performing? Is it that there's additional shipping that, that the customers don't like and so on and so forth, okay? So if you can bump this up to, let's say four, which, you know, it's not an unrealistic number. You know, we've gotten a lot of clients with ROAS as a four and five. So let's say we bump this up to four. As you can see, we've now broken even. So just by keeping the same numbers, but just doubling the return on ad spend, which like I said, it's not, extremely difficult to do we've made that 1500 loss into a break-even now let's say we optimize the website 
we made sure that we kill off all of the previous, uh, like the lesser performing campaigns, uh, the previous ads that weren't really, you know, getting us a low cost per click and a high click through rate, etc. And we bump it up to 4.2. As you can see, we've now actually made our clients some money. Okay. And then from there, once you make your clients some money, you can say to the client, listen, we're getting a 4.2 return ad spend here. It's not extremely profitable, but we're seeing good numbers here. Let's bump up the ad spend. Let's go from 1500 to 2000. So 1500 to 2000. And as you can see, we've now gone from a 1500 loss to a 700 profit. Why? Because we've bumped up the return ad spend um, and we've actually bumped up the ad spend. So those are things that we can manipulate and play around with. Another thing you can do as well, if you consult with the client on this, is figure out a way to get that profit margin percentage up. So how can we make more profit per sale? This can be simple stuff like switching from boxes to plastic bags when you ship, uh, maybe getting a better deal with your you know, delivery service, uh, maybe you know change up the way the delivery service is done. Maybe not go for next day delivery, but you know offer um, free workday delivery or something like that. You know just to make sure that the profit margin percentage is uh, is higher because now we're at fifty percent profit margin. We've made seven hundred, but let's say that is seventy percent, so an extra twenty percent. We've just made two point three k, or almost two point four k actually. And sometimes you know making that profit margin percentage higher is not as difficult as you may think one of our clients actually switched from um, custom coex you know delivery bags with the custom logo on etc you know, everything was custom made premium feel we switched that to regular just normal shipping bags that you can get from amazon and, and any other websites and that actually made her profit margin go from 25 percent to 35 percent which meant that you know our uh, results were actually much more profitable. We still needed a high ROAS, but we no longer need to get as high of a ROAS, uh, you know, to make it profitable. But because we maintained the ROAS, it was even more profitable, if that makes sense. So small things like that can actually make a big difference in your profit margin percentage. So those are factors that we can play around with: um, profit margin percentage, return ad spend, and your actual ad spend. And of course, if there's no other way, you can actually also manipulate your retainer or switch up the deal so that your client makes money and in return, you make money as well. Okay, so I hope you got something out of this. Uh, just before we wrap up, I'll go over the break-even ROAS and the retainer ROAS. The break-even ROAS is based on the profit margin percentage. So basically, it's one divided by the profit margin percentage times 100, as you can see here. And then the retainer ROAS, uh, that basically includes, you know, of course, your retainer as well. So that is basically the client agency investment um, divided by the ad spend times the profit margin percentage. So that is basically what gives you the retainer ROAS. So that means that with these numbers that I've plugged in here, we need a 1.4 return on ad spend to break even on the ad spend, uh, just, just strictly on the ad spend. And then if we want to include our retainer as well, then it's 2.5. So with these numbers, after 2.5, let's let's say it's 2.8. Um, as you can see, we've made our clients a return on investment. If it's 2.1, as you can see, we've made our clients a small loss. Um, and then if we re remove the retainer and we put this on 1.3, we're still at our loss, 1.5, we've got a small profit. Okay, so that is the break-even ROAS. And then when you include the retainer, so let's say the retainer is 5,000, that means that with this retainer, if you want to take home 5K, we need to get this client a retainer ad spend of at least five to break even with these numbers. So let's just try that out. Let's say we don't get a return ad spend of five, but 5.2. As you can see, we've made our clients a small profit and we can take home the 5K retainer. Just obviously, you know, if you be realistic, you will know that if you're taking on 5k and you've only got a 2k in ad spend and the client's only making 280 off of this deal it probably won't last very very long whereas let's say we take two and a half k we tell the client okay the additional two and a half k put that into ads then the client's making a lot of money and yes you're making a smaller retainer but the client will stay for longer which means that over the long term you'll actually end up making more money as well so hope you got some out of this. Like I said, if you're watching this in the Facebook group, leave a comment down below if you want this ROI calculator. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.